welcome to this first Be Inspired Assembly. That sounds quite cool, doesn't it? This is what we're going to do. The, the, the students decided that our school vision statement was that be inspired and achieve together. And you've got two assemblies every week. And we've decided that that's what we're going to call your two assemblies. Be inspired and achieve together. So in B Hall every week, it's going to be about you and your achievements and how you're achieving together as a group, as individuals, as classmates. Here in A Hall, we're going to have a Be Inspired assembly every week. Every Friday, you're going to come in here. And one of your teachers, and today it's me, is going to try their best to inspire you. Not tell you lots of different things that you have to then go off and do, but give you one message that you're going to remember throughout the day and throughout the week, and maybe for a long, long time. We're going to try and inspire you. My turn to start. So I'm going to start by talking about what's inspired me throughout the summer, and probably many of you as well. The best example that I know of one of our core values, we all try our best. And I'm talking about the Olympic Games. Every four years, the very best athletes that the world has to offer converge in one place. It's an ancient tradition. And it's still to this day one of the, the high points of the calendar. We look forward to it as a nation, as individuals. Every four years, the congregation of the strongest, the most skillful, the most determined people that we have in the sporting arena come together in Rio de Janeiro. And it, it is so inspiring. It inspires me massively. Here's a few of the highlights that have inspired me this year. The first one is this man, Andy Murray. Now, I know the TV says this to you quite often, but all the adults in the room will concur and would tell you this gladly. We remember growing up in a time before Andy Murray. We remember being somewhat embarrassed by the fact that we host the best tennis tournaments in the world, and yet we as a nation are rather hopeless at tennis. One or two small individual efforts that were good. A man called Tim Henman was really good at tennis. But then suddenly, Andy Murray comes almost out of the blue. And he must be one of the best athletes ever to represent our country. The consistency with which Andy Murray wins time and again, the fact that he has changed his physique and become so powerful and strong, even though his natural physique, if you see him as a young man, he was quite skinny. He was a tall and skinny teenager. And he is bulked up. And he's incredibly strong. And the only reason he hasn't won many, many more tournaments in his life, he's won a huge number, is that he's playing at a time with the other best tennis players ever to have played tennis. He's got to try and beat Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic. But you know what? He does. He tries his best. And every time he wins, he thinks, how can I get better from this point? And in the summer, he retained his Olympic title. He won it in London. He won it again in Rio. He is an exceptional example of someone who, when they try their best, they achieve incredible things. I was hugely inspired by Nicola Adams, a woman who has overcome incredible prejudice throughout her life, prejudice because of her skin color, prejudice because of her sexuality, and an awful lot of prejudice because she's a female athlete in a male-dominated world. People told her time and time again, women shouldn't box. It's not very feminine to box. It's not a feminine thing. Contact, physical sport, not very feminine. Lots of people on television said that as well. In the London Olympics, she almost single-handedly changed the opinions of a nation when we saw that actually 
It doesn't matter massively that Nicola Adams is a man or a woman. What matters is that she's an exceptional athlete, strong, skillful, determined, and trying her best each and every time she goes in the ring to be the best she can possibly be. And like Andy Murray, she retained her Olympic title. I was cheering. I was standing on a chair in my living room at the time when she did. I find her an exceptional athlete. I love Mo Farah. What's not to love about Mo Farah? What a story Mo Farah is. A refugee who came to this island from a war-torn country, but was welcomed into Great Britain and allowed to participate in a level of sport that has seen him become a world record breaker, a world champion, a multiple Olympic champion. Dominating races where traditionally Britain has never had a chance. And you know Mo Farah is going to win. You see him in his GB shirt and his little sunglasses and you just know he's going to win because he is the best. And he's made himself the best. I remember watching Mo Farah two Olympics ago when he was soundly beaten by the rest of the field and he looked into the camera lens and he said, it doesn't matter, I know what I did wrong, I'm going to put it right, I'm going to get better at this. And now no one in the world can touch him. I was hugely inspired by Jade Jones, a Taekwondo champion. She is the epitome of that wonderful message, this girl can. This girl can. Like Nicola Adams, people have told Jay Jones that, you know, it's not very feminine to do taekwondo, to kick other people in the head. What does that even mean in this day and age? What a lot of nonsense. There's no difference between what girls can do and boys can do. Girls, if you want to be into taekwondo, be into taekwondo. Boys, if you want to be in gymnastics or synchronized swimming, be into it. We don't live in that world anymore. And Jay Jones retaining her taekwondo uh, gold medal is a key example of that. She's very feminine. She's strong, skillful, determined. Maybe that's what femininity is these days. I was inspired by Max Whitlock. GB has never done that well in male gymnastics. We're getting exceptionally good at it. He was one of many male gymnasts who did brilliantly at Rio. But he was the top of the tree because he won two gold medals in the space of two hours, one night. And gymnastics is a mass particip participation sport. Millions of people across the globe take part. And he's the best one. And he got there through determination and trying, and every time he goes out there, be the best he can be. We all try our best. It's so inspiring, the Olympics. This was my favorite moment of the whole Olympics, by a distance. I sat and watched it. Now, my wife's a very keen hockey player, so I've got a vested interest. I used to play hockey a lot when I was your age. And I watched the GB women win gold against the tournament favorites. And I loved it because if you watched it too, you'll know what I mean. They were pasted in the final. They were underdogs. They were defending for their lives. They were so stoical. There was something about, about the Second World War almost about it. Defending, defending, and defending, and then surging through for victory. It was glorious to watch the GB women win that gold. And the pride that they had in their country was evident for all to see. I haven't even had a time to mention the cyclists who absolutely dominated the velodrome. Team GB is by far and away the most successful cycling country in the world. Not only in the velodrome, we keep winning the Tour de France as well with Chris Froome. We never used to do that. When I was your age, we were hopeless at cycling. But we've made this commitment as a nation to try our best, and it's paying off. I haven't mentioned the rowers who dominated the boating. I haven't mentioned any of these people who won medal after medal after medal after medal after medal. We woke up every morning 
Here's some more medals we won last night. We turned on in the evening. Let's win some more medals now. Isn't it wonderful being British now at the Olympic Games? The teachers in the room will concur. It didn't used to be like that. You are lucky, lucky people to be growing up when we turn on our TV and find out about all the success. That's what the medal table looks like. That's the final medal table from the Rio Olympics. Great Britain in second place. The Americans were ahead of us, that's true. The Chinese were behind us. The Germans, the French, the Australians, every other country who sent a team to the Olympics was behind us. All the more remarkable when we look at the populations of those countries. We are, bless us, a small country. We're not that big. We're an island stuck off the coast of Europe. And yet we dominate so many of these sports. That's why the Olympics inspire me. That's why I love them. It is my favorite sporting event by miles. With one exception. And that's the Paralympics. I hope you're watching them just now. They're still on now. I hope that you, you do see some of them. You can go home and see them at the end of the day. I know that they're late on at night because it's in Rio de Janeiro, but you can watch the catch up in the morning. I stay up quite late and watch them. I find the Paralympics even more inspiring because those athletes are as determined and as skillful and as strong and as powerful as their able body counterparts, and yet they've overcome great difficulties to be that good amputations, illnesses, disease, defects of birth, disabilities of the mind and of the body, and they overcome them and become what Channel 4 called them, and I concur completely, superhumans. I look at them and think these are absolutely prime examples of superhuman endeavor. I watched a man with no arms win the butterfly race in the 200 meter swimming pool. The think about that, the butterfly race. The man had no arms. He was swimming against people who did have arms or partial amputees. And he won it in a time that I couldn't get near. How incredible is that man? How incredible is Kadena Cox? She's probably our most successful athlete at the games. She's won now four medals, two of them gold, a silver and a bronze, but she's won them in both the cycling and athletics. She won a gold on a bike and she won a gold on the running track. She was an athlete before she was 21 when she had a stroke. And when she had a stroke, the tests that they did to work out why a fit and able 21 year old should have a stroke showed that she was suffering from the early stages of multiple sclerosis. And that is going to get worse for Kadena Cox. Her body is going to de degenerate slightly. So she determined to make it to Rio. And she made it to Rio, and my goodness, she tried her best. This might be her one big chance, and she grabbed it with both hands. Winning goals in two different events entirely. I'm inspired by people like Johnny Peacock. Now he is the Usain Bolt of the Paralympic world. He is an incredible athlete. He retained his 100 meter title. He has one blade, one full leg, one blade. He lost one of his legs just above the knee because he suffered meningitis as a child. Now that could have happened to you. It could really have happened to you. It's an it's a, it's a airborne illness that can, that can be transferred from one to another. So Johnny Peacock was an able-bodied child like you, and then he got meningitis, and they had to remove one of his legs. So for him, think about yourself. Could, had just as much chance of being you. And rather than wallow in self-pity and feel sorry for himself, he became an absolutely perfect example of a superhuman. Every time he hits the track, he tries his best, and he has become the embodiment of the Paralympic movement. 
strength and skill. And he would absolutely wipe out anyone in this school if we challenged him to a race, despite having one leg. Local lad, Richard Whitehead, went to a school not far from here. A fabulous, fabulous athlete in many events. Now, he's retained his 200-meter title while in Rio, but he does all sorts of sport. He's represented England at, at cricket, in bobsleigh. He's a cyclist. He loves sport. He loves it. It inspires him, and he inspires me. I haven't mentioned so many of these wonderful athletes who have won gold after gold after gold after gold and made me so proud every morning when I wake up and I find that, yeah, you know what? We won nine more golds yesterday in the Paralympics. You know what? We won another five in the afternoon session. As Great Britain has begun to dominate the world of Olympic sport, we've begun to dominate the world of Paralympic sport. And we are a small, small island compared to many of the countries that we're up against. It inspires me. I really want it to inspire you. I want it to be a message that we take forward, that we try our best every time. We look at these examples of people who try and commit, and we say, that's going to be me, because I put one extra detail on all those slides. And I hope you noticed what it was. Tell me if you noticed the extra detail that I put in the slides of the athletes. Yep. The schools they went to. Every single athlete I have shown you went to a state school. Not an independent school. Not a school where their parents paid thousands of pounds a year for them to go and get some idea of perfection. Better facilities, better teaching, better classmates, better opportunities. No, we don't live in that country anymore. In our country, in 2016, all those athletes went to schools like you. They are kids like you. Every one of them. Andy Murray went to a school like Arnold Hill and sat in an assembly and decided at some point when he was your age, you know what, I'm going to do this. I mean it. I'm going to do this. So why aren't you doing it just now? What's to stop you? What's to stop you being one of these elite athletes? What's to stop me, or even more so, sir or miss, thinking, you know what, I once taught that child, and now they're an Olympian. I've done it. I taught both the Downey sisters, you know, the gymnasts from Nottingham. I taught them both. I am immensely proud of that. I taught them English, not gymnastics, fair enough. But every time I hear them in an interview, I think, what oh, well-spoken girl. Maybe I played a part. We want that for you. Today is a day that can make a massive difference. Mr. Robertson mentioned on Monday about you flicking a switch and saying, yeah, you know what? I'm going to try my best. I'm going to do this. This is the day. Really, this is the day. I don't mean to the whole year group. I mean to you as an individual. Make today the day. Become one of those athletes. Nothing stopped them doing it. Nothing is stopping you doing it. You've just got to try your best. Thank you, Year 9.